welcome to episode three, where we have Kurt Toth. And for those of you who don't know him, you are absolutely missing out because he is my favorite person to play. He's the most entertaining uh, player, especially an incredible Bravo player. And I'm just super excited to have him here with me today uh, to commentate a couple of games that we played together. So thanks so much, Kurt. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Adam. Always a pleasure, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, what we did was we played uh, two games, <clears throat> Kano vs. Bravo, because we wanted to kind of illustrate what it's like to play against a, a Guardian player that has a lot of arcane barrier. In fact, Kurt included a rustic relic, which he in incredibly drew, like the first or second turn in both games. Uh, and then he also played, what was the the other card? Arena's Prayer. <laughs> that was, that was, and he didn't tell me he had that in there. And I had uh, quite the turn. You'll see that, that he was able to block quite a bit of damage. Um, so I'm really excited to go over this with you. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of watch this video and commentate. What's going on here is Kurt is uh, making some jokes about how, um, you know, he, he had to change his, his armor because he, I'm a wizard player. What exactly were you saying? That's the thing, right? Because you show up to play a game of flesh and blood if you're at any given armory and you bring your standard equipment and then someone pulls out Kano and you got to go back to like your trunk and dig out all your null room equipment, <laughs> right? It's absolute trash. I can't stand it. So I intentionally brought my regular gear and then I have to slip into this uncomfortable robe that you put me in to play against you, so... But you know what? You look great in that robe. You definitely <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I do, <laughs> I do rock that robe. But regardless, it looks ridiculous yeah. on anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you decided to run the four null, uh, arcane barrier, all, all, all four null rune. Now, is that something that you typically do uh, in like an armory or skirmish? <clears throat> yeah. Against Kano, I always run four, four null rune, mostly just to annoy the Kano player. And then I do run uh, Sledge. Uh, of course... Uh, as noted, I'm not running my standard deck, so you'll see it play differently. But the the null rune have to have four, in my opinion, if you're Bravo. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I mean, the, the sledge just make it makes it so difficult because you could just pitch for the sledge. You have a couple of floating. You know, you could easily threaten the pummel, which you know, if you ever play Kurt, you just have to know he always has the pummel, and he'll be very transparent about it. He'll tell you, I always have the pummel, and. You won't believe him when you get hit with, with a red and a blue from Arsenal, which uh, I have had the pleasure of being on the receiving end of. <laughs> Sadly, not today, though. So <laughs> That's true. That's true. Not today. You, I, you did hit me with, uh, with one, but we'll, we'll see that. So I think here uh, you chose, you won the dice roll and you chose to go second. Um, so tell me more about your decision to, to go second against Kano. Love Kano to go first. I could throw, because uh, Bravo has a ton of blues, I could throw my whole hand, uh, if necessary, to block you and then just draw back up. So uh, also letting you go second gives you two opportunities to play against me. If I were to play first, you play on my turn, then your turn, and things could just get ugly. And then uh, you would have tempo. So love letting you ditch your hand, ditch mine, we draw up, and hopefully I get tempo from the start. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I, you know, kind of figured that. So, um, you know, I just played, I, I was lucky I drew an energy potion. So I played the energy potion. And then I believe what I did was uh, Arsenal the Tome of Fiendel, uh, which worked out, if, if I remember correctly, maybe that was in the other game. But either way, I played the energy potion because I figured, hey, you're just gonna block with the arcane barrier, draw back up. Uh, it's not really worth me wasting cards, especially because it could go pretty long, right? Like, I don't want to waste a Voltic Bolt or something on you first turn and then later in the game be stuck with all blues. Yeah. Are you able to pause the video here? Uh, sure. Do yeah. that. So here is in a standard game where the, the game could go very differently. So you see on my turn, I've run out that Rusted Relic uh, for a good laughing moment. And to start out with five Arcane Barrier, because that's amazing, you would think. In reality, any Bravo player playing Kano, generally here I would want to pitch two blues and swing Sledge. I immediately pressure you and float two, uh, because then I'm forcing you to either take damage off the jump and deal whatever damage you want, or ditch two cards blocking. Mm -hmm. This now is giving you tempo, right? Yeah. 
This is me just showing off, throwing out a rusted relic that I've never played in my life, but look how beautifully rusted that thing is and who doesn't want to play it. <laughs> and, but really, in, in, you know, many Kano players would be like, now nah, I'm, I'm facing five arcane, I'm never going to break through. This is actually a huge opportunity for a Kano player. What did you think when you saw this card? Uh, I, I, listen, I respect you as a Bravo player 110%. So I thought something was coming, and uh, but when I when I first saw it though, I actually thought, hey, this is going to be difficult because, I mean, a as you'll see, you were able to stop a lot of my big attacks, um, and I, you forced me to go wide. Um, I was able to go tall in a couple turns, but I mean, in the second game especially, I had to go wide against you, and I, I do agree with you. You know, putting pressure on me that first turn is so important because. Now I have an arsenal card, I have four cards in my hand, and I'm starting to tick up on the Tunic. Um, so just giving Kano an extra turn is, is pretty big for, for the Kano player. Yeah, I think in game two, and we'll get to that, I run out Rusted Relic uh, when you made me go first, which yes. I'm actually okay with. Mm -hmm. right? um, but in this scenario where I'm playing second, Rusted Relic is a massive mistake for any Bravo player looking to... <laughs> Come out of this game a lot. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, just giving you, just keep everything in your hand and, and have at my face next turn. So yep. this is, to me, the, the turning point in the game, but it's a great screenshot. Look at that. Five Arcane Bear. Anyways. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I, I have to say I kind of enjoyed it, too, because never have I been able to actually see that. <laughs> right? Yep. That's what it's all about, man. People watching this video need to see something new. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I guess we we go, go to my turn, tick up the the tuna counter. Now is this where I had the tome? Um, I don't think you ran out of tome. No. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I think. I. Oh, maybe I didn't because you know it's funny. I think I had an Iowa Fidia in both games. So, um, I did see a lot of blues. So you know I'm pitching. To Kano off the eye, I see a lesson in lava. That's that's right. That's that's how it played out. So I see the lesson in lava, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do against five arcane barrier right now? <laughs> yeah. um, so what I did was I played the lesson as an instant to try to get cards out of your hand, so that that would enable me to play cards from my hand as an action. Um, and really, my, my main goal for the whole game from here on is just to try to get cards out of your hand before I'm actually coming at you with my main attack. Of course, from my perspective, you don't want less than a hit. That's just a nightmare. So mm -hmm. I'm going to fully cover it up. Yeah. And I see a pummel here. So I'm immediately thinking there's a pummel in the arsenal. Um yeah, I just I just kept canoing, and interestingly, I saw a ton of blues uh, both games. <clears throat> Luckily, actually, I think that was a blue Vultic Bolt. I actually can't see it from here. Yeah, I think it was a blue Vultic Bolt. I'm, again, I'm just trying to get cards out of your hand, because I'm also thinking if I could get cards out of your hand on my turn, that's a best case scenario, because then I could just do more canoing on your turn before you draw. Yeah. Out. So generally speaking, again, this is this is. Uh... This is a fun game for a number of reasons. If there's not a hit trigger on a Kano attack, I'm generally not going to block it because I need to keep pressure on you. In this instance, I just wanted to block everything you threw at just to see how it worked with, with Rusted Relic, right? Um, so here I've got one card left, and I immediately attempt to go to end phase. Um, there's not much I can do with one card. I can't swing Sledge, and nor do I like to leave myself open. Um, it is a blue card here. I'm quite certain. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, and, and one of my favorite cards, <clears throat> Cindering Foresight, uh, you get to play it as an instant on your opponent's turn. Uh, the blue one opts for one, the red one opts for three, and then if you, you do any arcane damage, um, it, it after playing this card on that turn, you could add a damage to it. Okay. Uh, also activates things like snapback and things of that nature, allows you to play it as an instant from your hand. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be very calculating here. You know, I broke the energy potion as opposed to pitching more because I want to see what you actually have in your hand. And if I could get thing, 
uh, get you to pitch to the arcane barrier, then maybe I could K no more, or, you know, I, I, uh, just get get in as little damage as I possibly can. Sure. So you came for five, I blocked three, eight, two to the face. Mm -hmm. uh, again, generally the right play there would have been to not block your Voltic Bolt, swing the sledge for six, and go back to applying pressure. As I'm trying to turtle up and see if I can deck you this game, um, two, yeah. two seats through, right? But, <clears throat> but right now you're playing all offense, right? And I'm playing all defense with five Arcane Barrier. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what people think of the game because uh, already – Twice, two consecutive plays, right? In, in hindsight, I would have 100% played them differently. Because uh, turtling up against Kano just generally was not working. Even if I had four rusted relics out there. Mm -hmm. It's just, <laughs> it's just I think, going to change a lot of minds. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I kept thinking this is going to be a long game. Like, I was expecting you to turtle up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the, the whole time. So you might see every time I pick up, if I, if I pitch a few cards per turn, it takes me a few seconds to really think about how I'm arranging my pitch because I'm expecting this to go late and to have to pitch stack and, you know, set up late turns and things of that nature. But I'm, I'm just pitching a, lot, a ton of blues. So I'm thinking, oh, man, this is this is going to be rough. Uh, sure. But it actually worked out a couple of times where, you know, I drew like the stir fork combo and things of that together. So we are your so turn. Damage that you can block. I mean, with five arcane barrier, right? You can only block five, and when you're yeah. coming tall, like you said, uh, the the it's bad math, right? Mm -hmm. I like you said, you shaking cards out of my hand is exactly what you need to do against Kano. So here's I run out one of my favorite cards, uh, Pursuit of Knowledge, which is especially effective against Kano. Uh, Kano doesn't really like to block this card, in my experience, and and I don't believe you did. No, I you know I. If I were lower health, I probably would have. But because I was at full health, uh, I saw this. I knew I was probably going to get pummeled. And I think my hand had like a sonic boom, a fork lightning, a nourishing emptiness. Like this was a really hard hand for me to, to get rid of. So I figured, yeah. hey, I think I even asked you like, hey, I think pummel lets me choose what I get rid of, right? <laughs> um, because if it was random, it would have. I probably would have blocked. But if, uh, But since I could choose... I really wanted to, to not, not not even just play the cards in my hand. I wanted to have them for later on in the game if I needed them. Because uh, sure. I think that you and I in an armory, I think we have played a game where I just ran out of gas. And you're just like, yes, all right, <laughs> sledge to the face. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and to your point, right, I don't think you saw a sledge to the face very often in these no. two, right? The turtling up strategy is just a totally different ball game for you. Yeah. So um, what would you yeah. what would you consider this? You're just turtling here, or like, what's the opposite of turtling? As so, well, let me clarify because I know that you've played it where like, hey, I'm just gonna balls to the wall, crippling crush you, right? Dominate it and see what you have. You've also, hey, I'm gonna block everything and just sledge all all the time. So which, you know, what are your things? If I'm thoughts? playing to win an armory, I am sledging the entire game. Entire game, yeah. Entire game. And I'm going to block whatever I can. And I, I'm going to pass some turns, right? But, but the majority of the time, I'm just going to sledge yeah. repeatedly. Um, here, of course, in this instance, I would have played this hand straight up just like I did this one. Pursuit with a pummel mm -hmm. uh, is the right play here. Oh, I remember now. So I, I actually arsenal blazing the first turn of the game because um, I was debating on pitching it to Crucible just to put it to the bottom. Um, but I was worried that if I drew it later on or, or my second copy later on that I'd have to use it to block or something. I said, you know what, I'm at full health. Let's just put it here for now and, uh, see how the, the game goes. Um, so that, that's what happened. And so that's why beautiful I said, thing. let me get rid of the forked. Yeah. And a beautiful time for nourishing emptiness right here. Yeah. Uh, I have a five card hand. I am running staunch response, which I didn't happen to draw here. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to take a uh, block three and take three to the face, giving you in return a five card hand. So, yeah. And that's why I, I let you, the other reason why I didn't mind getting hit um, for you to get that extra intellect, because I was planning on playing the nourishing emptiness. And I said, well, he's probably only going to be able to block with one card anyway. Um, so let me get a little damage through here. 
although it was a trade-off, right? So I got three damage through, but now you had more cards to block with, um, you know, or pitch to Arcane Barrier and still attack me, which you're doing here. Yeah. <clears throat> so at this point, despite the, the turtling strategy, I'm pretty confident I can win this game. It's 13 to 8. Here I am coming with my full hand, swinging sledge, floating two, which is textbook um, hurt on Bravo against Kano. And you're forced to either block it, take it to the face, uh, or return fire, but I still have two cards in hand, so not much damage should seep through. So this is a pretty good spot, um, at least I'm thinking uh, at the moment. How are you feeling? Yeah, so on my side, I'm having a hard time. You're, you're absolutely right, because um, I'm thinking if I don't block, I'm probably going to die. Like, you probably have a pummel, right? Um, if I do block, then I don't know when I'm going to have the opportunity to play the cards that I have in my hand. I mean, I had the Cindering Foresight. I was able to, to play it um, before the damage resolved to kind of opt, and I saw, you know, certain cards... That, that I thought, hey, maybe I could get there. So then I said, but hey, he still has two cards in his hand. He's floating two. So I actually let the damage go through because I wanted you to get rid of your pitch, um, which I think happens. And then I go off in response. Yeah, so I don't think I have a pawn here, right? You take six and go down to two, if I'm not mistaken. And then I think uh, go from there. That that may actually be the case there, Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, we we probably should have played one game and then done commentary because the two games, <laughs> <laughs> I'm conflating the two. All blending together. Yeah. I have a yeah. photographic memory over here, Adam. <laughs> is that, uh, point, is that a 3D playing, Bravo? I'm just playing with anything I can play with while you think about how to murder me, right? Yeah. Which is generally what happens. Yeah. I can get like three other armories in against when I play Kano. It's like speech. You know, this guy who's walk around and play like eight games of chess. Yeah, you know, that's what I feel like when I play Kano players. Yeah, I think uh, I told you here you're splitting atoms, right? All Kano players are splitting atoms when they look at their four card hand. Yeah, pretty much. That's a compliment, by the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I I actually played Centering Foresight and broke the lens, so I'm really digging here because I know that I'm I'm staring down the barrel right now. Um, so I, I, it looks like I, I canoed, I have snap back there. I know what's on top of the deck. I'm waiting to see what you do. <laughs> you show me the no, good old no fun ways to entertain myself by <laughs> examining rusted relic. Here. Yeah. So what, what you don't hear is there's, there's constant banter going back and forth and we were, we were contemplating maybe just letting that run. Um, but you know, we kind of wanted to, to, to spell out more of the methodology behind what we're doing here. Um, and of course, like you said, playing with Kano, there's a lot of thinking on both sides. So yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. I, I just took the damage. Um, and then this is where I continue to go. Cause I'm like, oh, okay. So either way I have one more turn to go off. So I see the stir. Now, in my opinion, taking the six there is a mistake. Okay. You know better as a Kano player, uh, and I'm not going to ruin or foreshadow what happens because uh, it may work out <laughs> for you in the end. But 13 to 2, here you're coming, stir into a stir crucible into what's a snapback. Yeah, so but the cindering's one, the stir is another three, so that's four, crucible's five, so that's eight damage. So yeah. my my thinking was if you pummel me, you're getting rid of those two. Um, the two pitch, you're getting rid of another card with pummel, and the only the, the most you could block with is three, right? So if you're at 13, I'm doing eight damage here. So let's say, was that five? Did I count that right? Eight? Yeah, you did. I blocked five. You came for eight, and I took three. Yep. Right. So yeah, what was I thinking there? So I arsenal, and, and to me, again, you're in a bad spot, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is where, of course, uh, I think I, I said at this very moment, I looked at my hands and I said, Adam, you want me to go for it or do you want me to slow play you? 
and you said, do whatever you want to do, whatever you said, right? Sort of uh, baiting my face as any good wizard player does. Yeah. And here I have the option to dominate an attack. Tear Sunder is in my hand. I have an, an option to yes. tear Sunder the Sledge, which is actually a horrible idea against a Kano player. Mm -hmm. But I'm forcing you to kill me this turn or you are dead. Or I pitch two blues and I swing Sledge and play conservatively because you have to block it. Or yeah. you have to try to kill me, which you're not going to be able to do when I have two cards in hand and two floating. Yeah. So but because I'm me and because I'm you're you, I go the Terra Sunder route here. Yeah. So I, I wish I wrote down what I saw because I, I remember thinking, okay, what, what I do next is going to um, be dependent on whether the damage goes through or not or whether you pummel. Uh, so I think I responded the way that I did because I didn't see the pummel. Um, I'm not sure if that makes much sense, though, because if I could have killed you, I would have killed you, right? But we'll... Well, well you do we'll kill see. me this turn. <laughs> this turn, yeah, but last turn. I wish I remembered what yeah. <clears throat> what I saw. Yeah. So here, here's where you're telling me. You're like, I could... You're moving the sledge. You're like, I could do this. <laughs> Which is the smart play. Yeah. Uh, instead, I'm saying, hey, kudos to you if you have it, Adam, right? Yeah. Because you're going to have to come for a minimum of 10 damage, and there's a sigil in Arsenal right now. Yeah. So you, I know you're going to have to come for 13 damage. Kill me. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, so I'm able, still able to float two when I dominate the Sledge. So Sledge's coming for seven dominate. Um, again, better play is... Only pitch two blues, right? Run out sledge because you're at two. Mm -hmm. You either have to try to kill me, which you're not going to be able to do, or block it down. And now you're on defense the whole game, and I don't think you can get here. Yeah. So here I sit back, two floating, a sigil and arsenal. So you've got to now come for 15 to kill me. Yeah. So I can't over here, right? I, I have to Hail Mary it. Yep. I got really lucky, saw fork lightning on top. Now, I don't, I don't think I knew that was there. This is when I start to weep softly. <laughs> I, I do remember, though. I remember because of all the cards I was opting and all the cards, the blue cards I was pitching. I'm like, there's got to be something that I could attack with on top. Um, I didn't know it was a fork lightning, but I knew there was something. Um, I also had the Sonic Boom in my hand, so I was thinking, okay, maybe I could break the Storm Striders and Sonic Boom into something. But instead, I, uh, I fork lightning with the crucible and the metacarpus. You flip over the sigil, of course. Not not something I ever want to see. And then I had the blazing in the uh, in the arsenal. So that was just. The, the, the card that I thought I made the mistake putting in the arsenal uh, actually won me the game. So I got, I got lucky there. And, and like you said, you probably wouldn't have played it that way. Um, but, you know, it's always fun to, to force Kano to make a decision. Yeah, and to your point, I mean, if you don't, if you don't top deck forked there and or have blazing and mm -hmm. arsenal, you know, who knows how that goes. But... Uh, it's what I found you always have to do against Kano. You have to pick whether you're going to go for it and make them have it or whether you're going to just, you know, eventually tire them out, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, that's a, that's a safe number, right? I think 12 is probably the not safe number, but you were at 10 with two pitch and sigil in the arsenal, right? I, I think even if you were in, a, in an actual event, I don't know if that's really the, that wrong of a move. Well, so in that game, there are, there are three plays I, I just wouldn't make, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't run out Rusted Relic one because it wouldn't be in my deck. Yeah. Right? I, I, so on, on turn one, I'm already sort of behind. Uh, the next turn, again, I wouldn't block the no on hit trigger Voltic Bolt that you sent my way. Mm -hmm. so I, so, and I didn't swing back on you on turn two. So I gave you essentially four free turns to just go crazy. And then here... Despite that, I, I'm in a position where I have 10 life. 
Uh, I know your situation. I know you're on the back foot. Um, and you're not going to be able to kill me even if you have forked and blazing if I just swing sledge. So um, hopefully my my brain would kick in and I would swing sledge intelligently and, and just keep the pressure on because now you're going to be playing off the back foot and you're going to have to try to set something up. But you're going to have to do so under heavy pressure, right? Because you're... I'm now threatening lethal every turn. Yeah, because because you know I I I did forked for what ten, so if yep. you blocked five and sigiled, so you would have blocked five, you would have been at eight, and I only would have done five right, and then if I blazing, you would you would still be at three. So yeah, that um, yeah, and then and the you're sledge. taking the sledge to the face, and, and then I'm taking the sledge, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. That that would have been the the right move. So I I get actually, you know what? If you just threw sledge at me with all that in your hand, yep. I would have either had to block exactly or played the the sonic boom, but I had the reds in my hand. Uh so I don't I don't know if you that either worked. This is what, right? We would have been in the moment you and I usually go in, which is you either gamble to try to kill me because yeah. you have enough if I don't have the sigil. Yeah. Right? So you either gamble that I'm not, I don't have a sigil in Arsenal, and then you go for it, and it's, so it's either you die, Kurt, or I die as mm -hmm. Adam, uh, which I think is the way it would have played out, because uh, you usually like to take that gamble. <laughs> um, or to your point, you're forced to block, and now you're giving up two cards, yep. um, and you're not able to get off that turn. Yeah, and I'm right. just scrambling to get the kill um, you know, by the end of the game before I die, but I'm also giving you the opportunity to find more sigils and things like that. So yeah, yeah, d definitely not a good spot to be in. And, and to your point, had you attacked with the sledge on the second turn, I don't think that game would have happened. This, like, I, I don't think I would have won that game. Yeah. 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 Any one of those three plays, right? You don't run out Russell relic on turn, on turn, whatever it was, zero. Mm -hmm. If I swing the sledge on turn two, if I swing sledge on that turn, all of those, I think, Kano falls, right? But this is a, a good demonstration of if you try to turtle up against Kano, even if you're running five Arcane Barrier as Bravo with as many blues as you can count. I'm running, tw I ran 28 blues in this meme deck for you. <laughs> and you just can't stop it, right? Yeah. Because you, you will still come over the top or go around of all of that Arcane, and there's just nothing you can do, right? Mm -hmm. So turtling is not the answer. In my opinion, to beat Kano, you have to shake cards out of his hand to have any chance. I just, I, I guess I find that interesting that you say that sle attacking with Sledge isn't turtling. Uh, I don't think it is. Yeah. I mean, it's boring, right? <laughs> yeah. so here's what Sledge is like, Adam. Right? There was a, a high school girlfriend I dated. She, I called her Psycho Cindy. You ready for story time? <laughs> right. story time I'm so excited. <clears throat> Psycho Cindy. She was, a, she was a cheerleader, and she was extremely attractive, right? Everyone was like, man, Cindy, right? So she and I hooked up one time. I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. We hooked up one time. Uh, I didn't meet my, my wife until later in life. And we started dating. Cindy, man, was so boring, right? Like, mind-numbingly boring. But she was super hot, right? But mind-numbingly boring and, and psychotic. I called her psycho because, you know, in high school, you'd like write letters in class and you would yeah. exchange them in between classes. Well, they yeah. used to anyway. By the end of any class at, at recess or whatever, in between class, I'd be at my locker. She'd come with like a shoebox filled with notes <laughs> after one period. And I was like, one, where did you get the shoebox from? Did you bring that from home, you psycho? And two... How did you fill up the whole thing? With, I just saw you at the end of the last period, right? Did you write me 48 notes in your 40-minute class? It's insane. Anyways, we still hung out. We had a good time, right? As bored as I was, I just kept looking at her and just blocking out whatever she was saying. But then I realized when I stopped paying attention to her, even just for a moment, I was like, I need a, I need a minute to breathe because of this constant annoyance in my face. Then she got real mad. Adam, like to the point where I'm like, if I take a nap at your, if your place, I think you're going to murder me. <laughs> right? She needs constant attention. 
Same as sledge, right? It's so boring. The second you sleep on it, it's going to kill you, right? Yeah. So sledge is my psycho Cindy. <laughs> I don't think it's turtling because it is co- applying this constant annoyance to your face, right? And you have to respect it because if you look away, psycho Cindy is going to kill you. Yeah. Right? So, no, I don't think it's turtling. Turtling is what I did the first two hands, which is just throw my whole hand at blocking. Got it. And waiting until I gas out. Gets you to laugh, right? Got We're it. We're running a uh, rusted relic, and you're like, ha-ha, joke's on you. You can't stop me. I'm just like, dang it, you're right. <laughs> Got so, it. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. Um, so, and, and you know what? I think everybody has had a Psycho Cindy in their life. So uh, I'm sure that they could they could relate, and everybody's gonna. I, I think after that they're gonna think of their psycho Cindy and immediately put Sledge into their deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, let's be real. The, the times you and I have played, and I just continue to push Sledge forward. Yeah. Every turn, and yeah. you don't know if a pummel's an arsenal, right? Mm-hmm. So it's either six or eight or nine or ten, right? You don't. I mean, it's just what do you do with it? Yeah. What do you do with it? So I don't. I don't. I think it's actually. That's an aggressive strategy. It's an aggressive, but it's also cautious. Yeah, because it's constant pressure. Can do, right? Yeah, it's constant pressure. That, that, that's fair. So, um, and that makes sense. And you know what? Knowing that you run Sledge against Kano, um, this next video uh, or the next game, you're going to see uh, how I play Tome like very early. And I used to not play Tome. And then my last video was with Kieran. And he talks about how Tome is actually a very aggressive card. And I was like, you know what? I always thought of Tome as as more of a defensive card because you're gaining life and trying to just get as many cards in here as possible. But the viewers will see, like, no, especially when combined with a first turn nourishing emptiness, which is fantastic here. uh, Tome could be very aggressive, especially when you get lucky like I did and draw like six blues or seven blues in a row. (laughs) So, so this here, game shouldn't have even been recorded. This, this is this is just dirty. This, <laughs> this whole game is just dirty. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I have to admit, there's, there's, there's some fun spice in this one. Yeah, I, th- no, there's there's some. I laughed quite a bit, especially when you flipped two cards over. But I'm not going to reveal it. Yeah, I mean, we already talked about it, but I want to want to leave a little bit of mystery. But also, I got really excited. Um, there was a pretty nice Kano sequence, and I know you're not really a Kano player. Have you ever played Kano before? Like as Kano, you have. Okay. Do you, do you do you enjoy it? I do. Okay, but it does. It's just uh, not as satisfying. But I know as how rude it is and disrespectful to your opponent to play as Kano, <laughs> so I ditched it. Fair enough. Not not like a, a dominated crippling crush or anything like that. That's right. You know, I wasn't running crippling crush in this in this meme deck. Really? I wasn't running spinal crush. That's that's how stupid this deck. Is, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's absolutely disrespectful. So here I swing sledge. Uh, as you should, Psycho Cindy, straight yeah. to the face yeah. for six, right? And, and, and I took it because I had I had an Eye of Ophidia and a Tome. Uh, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to go right back up to 15. I'm going to have even more cards in my hand. Um, so, you know, look, opting off the eye. I think I actually saw two more blues and I'm like, uh, yeah, that sounds great. Let's look. I already used my action point, so let's get as many blues in my hand as possible. But now, now I have to start thinking, right? Because I have all these blues. I have to figure out what I want to arsenal, if anything, uh, and, and, you know, how I'm going to try to just get as many cards out of your hand as possible. This is, even though you still see my hand, that's a plastic hand. I went and go get a sandwich while you think about what you're going to do <laughs> with your 28 cards. There, there are a couple of turns in this game where I take a while. So I do, I do as always, I appreciate your patience. I've gotten better, though. I've gotten a little fat. There have been times where I've taken, like, 10 minutes. I don't even mind if you take time to, like, sh- dish out 37 damage. It's those guys that take, like, 20 minutes to, to Voltic Bolt for three. It's like, come on, man. You didn't yeah. need to do all that. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, so here so, you swing, you swing for two. I block two, yeah. float one. Yeah. So I'm I'm finding blue, two blue ether spindles off the top, and I'm like, you know what? I'm either gonna opt or he's he's gonna take cards out of his hand. So let's let's go. Now this is another one of those instances where, generally speaking, I think I even said here, you're trying to shake cards out of my hand to yep. come with a bigger attack. 
mm -hmm. right? I know better than to block these, but because I'm in meme deck turtle mode, I'm gonna block them. So I'm sure I throw down another card here and you're super hyped about it. Yeah. I proved to the world that turtling sucks. Yeah, and I actually, I remember saying to you like, hey, remember I used my action point on the tome. Um, but you're like, yeah, but you, you still have like three cards in your hand, right? So that was that was fair. Um, but honestly, I, the reason I was playing the Ether Spindles, I didn't have anything planned, like nothing. But I really was just thinking, if I could use my hand to get as many cards out of your hand as possible, I'm going to draw up at the end of this turn, and you're going to have no cards. Yeah. Um, so that was really the main goal there. Now you come with another dirty snapback. Yeah. Two cards in hand. Another obvious no block situation, but what do you think I'm gonna do here, Adam? I think I'm gonna block again. I think so. Yeah, why not, right? Give the I fans what they want. <laughs> block Kano. <you know. laughs> I gotta say though, I do love making you think. Okay. It's good. Cause because whenever you think, you walk through your process in a very comedic way. So uh, it's, <laughs> always, it's always entertaining. So there goes another blue, right, for kicks. And at this point, I already can't swing sledge, right? Yeah. So by me committing those three blues, I'm telling you, I'm not going to attack you next turn. Yeah. So again, what, what was going So what was going through your head? Was it, hey, I'm just going to show what turtling looks like and how it doesn't work? Or did you, did so, you have yeah, a strategy I mean, it, in mind? This is, like I said, this is a deck that I'm never taking into an armory because if you run Rusted Relic and Irina's Prayer into... Uh, <laughs> to anybody other than Kano, <laughs> you're gonna get uh, your your face beat off. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I want to show it, what happens with five arcane barrier and Irena's prayer and sigil, and what does that look like, right? Because a lot of Kano players are gonna say, "I just can't, I can't beat that." Yeah. But it's flawed logic, right? If you let any hero keep their entire hand, and anyone who's watched ever a video of me or a game with me in it. I am aggro, pedal down all game long. And like I said, I consider Psycho Cindy not turtling. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's the only way to do it. I have to take cards out of your hand. And if I don't, if I let you dictate play, I'll lose. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm a terrible player, but I will lose every game if I let you keep your hand and dictate the tempo. Mm -hmm. So here you come again, right? You let me draw up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you're swinging more. Now, again, here's another one with no on-hit trigger. Yeah, just just a six damage Voltic Bolt. <clears throat> By the way, uh, I I love the themed play mat. I was I was surprised. I was expecting to see the first place. Uh, what was it? The kitchen table event. That was a pretty big event that you won. That you got that beautiful play mat. But I do I do appreciate the theme. Yeah, you got to stay in character here. Yeah, right? in season. So here again, I make a play I would never do, which is blocking five. I would never hit block five uh, in a standard armory on a, on a Voltic Bolt. Bad business. Mm -hmm. So I take one, again, just trying to minimize damage. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been at 15 this long against, <laughs> against you. <laughs> I don't think you come off of 15 this game, do you? Um... I don't remember actually. I don't think you do. I think I'm in full. I'm in full. I'm not in here, right? I had two cards in hand and I didn't swing at you, right? Yeah. Oh, this is is this where I drew? Yeah, this is where I just drew stir forked with two blues. I'm like, oh, that's fun. Yep. I think I have a red ether spindle in my my arsenal too. Um, you because... see your hand gestures there whenever you run out forked. Did you notice what you just did? I'm not going to ask you to rewind it, but you like politely present. And you're like, I'm going to do 12 damage. You know, you move your hands. That's why I'm sort of mocking you there, right? Move your hands a little bit. And then you're like, oh, let me slide metacarpus out here. 14, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not too long. 14. Yeah, it's, you know, it's whatever. So well, now this is, God. This, is, this is why the meme deck was worth it. In this very moment, yes. Adam. Yes. Oh, right. This is where I'm presenting 14 damage. Yeah. And you basically, I, I, I think you wind up taking two. <laughs> I throw out three to block three, right? Yeah. Uh, 
So what, what's going on in your head here? Like, what, what are you counting? So I have a Irina's Prayer in hand and one in Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, I think a yellow, I don't know, yellow and a red uh, between those two. So I throw out a pummel, uh, and there comes Irina's Prayer. Um, for anyone that doesn't know that card, because I'm sure you haven't seen it played <laughs> against you, uh, if it's red, you take six minus the pitch value of the card on the top of your deck that happened to be blue, and you can block that much arcane. So in this instance, it would be six minus three for the blue pitch. I'm blocking three arcane. Oh, that's a red pummel I pitched there, right? Mm -hmm. So that red pummel <clears throat> allows me to play Arena's player, which costs one, and then block three arcane with it. So now I'm already blocking six arcane of your 14. <clears throat> and I still have an Irena's Prayer in Arsenal, <laughs> which I believe is the yellow variety, which will block for two, now that I know the top card is a blue pitch. Because right? the, uh, the yellow Irena's Prayer will be five minus X. That's pretty, it was, it was pretty epic. I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. what? I just, you just, you take two? <laughs> I, I built the whole deck for this moment right here, Adam. <laughs> This is it. I think I even sent you because I didn't know it was a meme deck yet, right? <clears throat> um, I think you were, you, were, you had some surprises, right? <laughs> and you were you were giving me some surprises, and you were like, uh, you're like, yeah, man, Kano's running rampant. Of course, I'm. <laughs> this is what I'm bringing to Armory. So I'm like, oh man, <laughs> that's so funny. <clears throat> oh man. So there comes the yellow. Uh, I pitched a blue there, so I'm blocking another two with that blue. Using my full five arc, uh, arcane barrier with that rusted relic, blocking three with the red, two with that. So, <laughs> yeah, covering up, boop, boop. I'm covering up ten of your fourteen. So I ended up taking four there. Oh yeah, four, four. Yeah, I was. Uh, I think I, I think my response was, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. All right. I guess next turn. Yeah, but well, here, here's the moment, right? And this is why mean decks also don't work. Because now. That little hand gesture was, I have no cards in my yeah. hand. Do your worst. Yeah. And this is where I take a little while because I'm I'm trying to do the math. I'm trying to think of the best. Because there were a couple of ways of go approaching it. Um, I just had to figure out how to. Because I, oh, I think I have a, a Tome of Etherwind in my hand. And I, I'm going to Kano and see like a reverberate. <laughs> or I'm going to Talismanic Lens and see two. No, I Talismanic Lens and I see two blue reverberates. I'm like. This is a rare opportunity where I could actually use a blue reverberate and get value on it. <laughs> yep. And I think for the first time you don't see my hand, I've officially left to finish my sandwich. <laughs> wow, <while> you <laughs> calculate took, my took, death. Took a nice swim, you know, showered after. Yeah. <laughs> Put on a comfortable, <laughs> was that a Harvard kids hoodie? In, in bed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, <laughs> just, just casually. Support. That's, that is a Harvard hoodie, actually. That is a Harvard, yeah. <laughs> I'm usually like in a suit and a tie in these things, right? So today I went casual. Yeah. I realize my um, my recording outfit is just a black t-shirt. Like, that's it at this point. Works, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to fade into the... To the I was going to say, you're kind of just like this floating head. Yeah. Right? It's intimidating. <laughs> So, uh, so here's where I, I break the lens. I'm seeing two blue reverberates. And usually I'm thinking, when I see two blue reverberates, I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do with that? Uh, do I do, just put them on the bottom? I said, you know what? Actually, this could work. Because uh, I have a Tome of Etherwind in my hand. So, you know, reverberate says, hey, if you do ar arcane damage, then you can play a, a non-attack wizard card from your hand as an instant as long as it costs uh, equal to or less than the damage you deal with reverberate. So I play the tome because it's free. I know there's a, I know there's a blue reverberate on top. I don't know what the second card is, but I'm saying, hey, I'll, I'll add one more blue to my hand. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of how to do at least 11 damage. So here's the the one. probably asked you if I could throw my rusted relic at you and you probably <laughs> said no that's why I'm hesitating on the counter I don't know what I said here but, 
Um, oh, I, I actually I think, think you're explaining to me that, yeah, you can play the next yeah. card as an instant. Yeah. Politely telling me that you're going to do some dirty stuff. Yeah. So there I go down the town. Not knowing if we were going to commentate or just let the gameplay go. You're like, ah, just, just tell the street that the, the viewers. You draw more. I've again left the room. <laughs> I have nothing to do here. You can tell me how much damage is coming. Yeah. Sentry so, Foresight, which you told me afterwards you've now fallen in love with, right? Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, because, I, I mean, if, for anybody who's watched the first video, yeah, I, I, I played eight rounds um, in a local skirmish. My two losses, one in the Swiss rounds was to um, Eric playing Kano, and then one in the final two was Eric playing Kano. And he won both games because of his soul red cindering foresight. Um, well, not not just because of that he played extremely well, but it, it's just so unbelievably good to be able to opt three on your opponent's turn and, and add a damage to whatever you're you're doing. This is interesting. Now again, I told you I played Kano as Kano, uh, and then put it down respectfully, but I don't. I'm not in love with it as much as you. Now, you're an expert Kano player. Centering Foresight, to me, if I'm playing, you know, my Psycho Cindy strategy or running Spinal Crushes or whatever, I actually like to see that card in your deck. Yeah, because well, it blocks two. blocks two. Well, it's also just not... It's, it's not doing damage to my face, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't care if you opt. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I, I get it, right? Someone of your caliber being able to opt is, is exponentially more powerful than most oh. of the Kano's I run into, I suppose. Well, I definitely appreciate that. But, but uh, you know, especially against you, because, and I, I mentioned you in like every video, every time I'm talking to somebody about, you know, how to beat Kano, <clears throat> you know, when I first started playing, I think, and one of, or, or at least one of our first games, I was asking you a lot of questions and you said you always want to force anybody you play to make the decisions, right? You don't want to just let them really think through what they're doing. I'm just going to pause here real set, real quick. Uh, you, you don't want to just let people play their own game. Like you want to force them to play your game, right? And that's why you always threaten the pummel and, and things of that nature. Um, so the reason I'm saying all that is because being able to opt three Try, reduces the variance. So whenever you make me force me into a decision, I think it kind of widens that net of opportunity if I know and can control the next couple of cards that I'm going to get. So so here's the counter to that, right? And in, in this game, to your point, knowing that that is my play style, this game is the epitome of why I have that mentality, right? Because this is the opposite play style of what you're accustomed to seeing me play. Mm -hmm. And your life total is unblemished, right? is absolutely unblemished as I try to turtle into my shell. But the other, the other side of it is when you talked about centering foresight and opting and et cetera, is most Kano players are calculating precisely, right? And they look at my life total. Uh, and you know, generally speaking, when I am playing, I have a sigil or a pummel and arsenal, mm -hmm. and I don't. You saw that maybe once or twice in the, across these two games, right? Mm -hmm. I think both of them happened in game one, right? I had a pummel and a sigil and arsenal. But I do that to try to bait you. You opting, you're trying. Generally, Kano players are looking for that precise death hit, right? If I'm at ten life, well, I need to present ten, right? Or if he's floating two, I need to present twelve. Mm -hmm. And that's why, just like in that first game we talked about, I want to entice you to attack me and me to sigil to stay alive. Yeah. And then I'm presenting lethal and you've just done everything you can possibly think of doing and you take lethal to the face and die. That's how I win most of my Kano games. In this instance, all right, that's not done. And that's why I don't fear Cindering Foresight because I'm hoping it works against your atom-splitting wizard mind, right? Yeah. As you're going into TI-82 mode and calculating how to kill me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I think, do I use a TI-83 in my financial planning? I don't remember. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, <clears throat> so... Let's hope they matured from 30 years ago when I was in school. Yeah, so. absolutely. So um, definitely fair point. I think this is actually a really good opportunity to talk a, very briefly uh, about that for newer players. You know, I, I think one of the biggest things I see it for newer players at my local armories is that they'll just play the sigil from their hand. And I'm like... 
you don't know how powerful it is, not just against Kano, but anybody, right? You don't know how powerful keeping a sigil in your arsenal is, because you could play it any time. So if you have something that you want to put into your arsenal later on, play the sigil and put it in there. But but exactly as you said, so many people are going to make a, a, a potentially game-losing decision thinking that they have the exact amount of lethal and they don't account for the, the, the three health from sigil. Um, so, so awesome point. So, so yeah, here, if I was, in hindsight, if I was thinking correctly about, you know, this being an educational video and that game one, I, I would have thrown out sledge. It would have been a perfect way to see how you would have calculated, right? And gone for the kill, which you could have killed me if I didn't have a sigil, right? We talked that through because it's hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid as a Kano player, just like it is hard to avoid when playing Kano mm -hmm. to go for the kill shot. Yeah. And nine out of 10 times, it's the wrong play, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to stay disciplined in the game and true to what's happening. Right. And, and in the game one was a perfect example. If you stay true to what's happening uh, and not force the issue, it, it usually works out well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so just to kind of explain what happened here, <clears throat> I, I really, this is was one of those sequences you just get really excited about as a Kano player. So, <laughs> You know, I broke the talismanic lens. I see two blue reverberates on top. I'm thinking, my immediate thought is, oh, what do I do here? But then I realize, oh, I have a tomb in my hand, or a tome, rather. I can play it from hand because he's got nothing to block with. So uh, I, I Kano, play the reverberate uh, just for one. I'm not going to waste Crucible on it, um, hoping that I can get more value out of, out of it later on, which I actually do because I play the, uh, the tome off the reverberate, draw the other blue reverberate and another card, um, then I play Cindering Foresight, which will add one damage to my next card. Um, I see the, the Fork Lightning on top. So I think I, I Kano into the Fork Lightning, I play that, and I'm able to, to do, I think, what what is that, 10 damage? So that was uh, 1, 2, no, 8 damage here. It's okay, yeah. yeah. It's okay. 8 damage. And then I know that I, because I Cindering Foresight, I'm pretty sure that I know... Um, you know, a few other cards that are on top of the deck, and I think, okay, I could I could definitely win next turn. So I'll just hit yeah, play. Yeah, and this game on the opposite end of Kano, it's it's unwinnable at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, unless you somehow draw sigils and whatnot, because we technically this was your turn, right? So we had to pass to my turn. I tick up on the tunic, I draw four. But the the, the really big thing here is that I still have my boots. And I think that's what kind of sealed the game. And that's why the reverberate was so important, because it allowed me to play the tome without breaking the, bo the boots. And I think we only have like three minutes left on the video, so don't worry, you won't see me <laughs> think, thinking and calculating while Kurt eats uh, another sandwich. <clears throat> or maybe you do for at least two minutes. So here I run out uh, one of my favorite cards to play against Kano, uh, C and C. Mm -hmm. It only needs to be pitch one blue. I'm floating one, and I have two in hand. This is an ideal scenario, not when the score is 15 to two. In any other uh, real world example, this would be uh, a beautiful play. So here, I mean, you need to. I don't even think I have. Well, I can only block five arcane, right? So you know exactly what it's going to take to. To kill me here mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think you do spend uh, the next minute and a half uh thinking about how to do that <laughs> but at this point as soon as you put that up there regardless of what calculations you're doing uh, i know the game is lost right yeah, yeah i i typically try to save my boots until the very last turn if i can help it i'm pretty sure you say at this moment um, I'm going to go for it. And if you don't have a sigil, you know, the game's over, but if oh, you do right. have a sigil, then I can, I can survive here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. So uh, uh, I think I have, again, it's, it's, yeah, go ahead. No, I think I have either a stir and a sonic boom. I'm just trying to work out the best way of, of approaching it. Um, I realize that I don't really have that much pitch because um, I don't, I, you know, I've gone through so many blues. So I have like a bunch of reds and yellows. Uh, and yeah, th th so I, I say, oh, I'm just going to pitch a Sonic Boom, play the Stir. Then I think I have the Red Ether Spindle in my, yeah. So that's going to present for six damage. You can only, 
Well, is that six damage? No, seven damage. I'm sorry. Seven That's area. seven damage. You can only block five. Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> like like we've talked about, um, I'm just going to pause the video here. So, like we talked about, I mean, typically, uh, the way to beat Kano is to not play Anathos, but to play Sledge, at least in Blitz, right? So, you play the Sledge, and you just keep putting constant pressure on on him. Um, usually, when I win, like, like Kurt kind of showed in the first game, it's they get bored, or they think, hey, uh, I'm at a safe life total let me just kind of come at their faces as, as you know much as possible and then i'll just uh i'll take advantage of that or if they come at you with the sledge it's really just trying to to get as many cards out of their hand as possible so that you can actually do some damage on their turn and that's why you know my my old deck list which didn't really play blazing or chain i don't play chain lightning anymore actually but um didn't really play blazing didn't play all the tomes I tried to just kind of chip away and deal damage. It just wasn't doing enough. You really need to be able to go as wide as possible and then, you know, pitch stack and, and go tall late game. So here's my request to you, Adam. Sure. You're on episode three. This is episode three, right? Yes. By the way, you're doing a phenomenal job. Oh, thanks. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, incredible. It's, it's hard for Wizards, I think, to, to see Wizards lose, right? So it's just, it's, I think it's demoralizing for all the wizards of the world, right? They've just been beaten down for so long. And they're like, we haven't gotten any support in these, in, in any recent set. And they're just salivating for Everfest and whatever comes afterwards. So this, here it is, right? Episode three, it's like return of the wizard, right? Um, my request to you, Adam, <laughs> is when you get to your 100th anniversary or, uh, episode or, or 50th anniversary, whenever it is, I'm going to request an invite back. I'm going to run a standard Bravo Armory deck, and we're going to go all out at each other, and we're going to commentate, similar to this if you're up for it, what a, what a real battle looks like. Because um, I think those games, I thought this would be more interesting. I think it is very interesting, right? But I don't. No, Kano player is probably going to run up against it. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, it does prove that they can sort of go. They can beat uh, anyone who's running uh, five arcane barrier, uh, which I think would generally be Dash or uh, any crazy Bravo player running Rusted Relic. But mm -hmm. uh, certainly can be done. Uh, but it's different. I like the way you play when when you're staring down a Spinal Crush. Right. Yeah. There's so many more decisions. Yeah. In this game, I don't even think I attacked. Right. Other than that, that uh, C and C. Um. So you're sitting at 15 life, which is which is wild, but uh, incredible to play with you, man. Uh, whether it be a meme deck or a real deck or, or whatever the case might be, I mean your your lines are clean, they're precise, uh, and I will wait all day with my sandwich to experience <laughs> what you're putting out on the table. I very much appreciate that, and the feeling is is absolutely mutual. And I'll I'll raise you one. Um, I don't have any plans for the next episode. So if you're around over the next, you know, week or two, I'd love to to get those games in even sooner. And I think running a back-to-back -back could uh, actually work out really well. Let's do it. And if you beat my face off uh, on my normal deck, let's just not air those. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll present to the crowd how many games we had to play for me to get a win uh, that we could air. Yeah, honestly, I, I think I have, like, just below a 50% win rate against you. So definitely not like I, uh, like I win every game. Right. Yeah. It's a coin toss. Yeah. Um, but it's a good time, no yeah. matter what happens. Well, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope everybody at home uh, you know, enjoyed it as much as I did. All right, have exactly. a good night.